Previously on Book Writing with Extreme Ray. I've never tried to write a book before. The middle has been a very long journey. I finished the first draft. Oh! It's, it's Halloween. I finally got to the end of a third draft. I'm waiting to hear back about draft four. The night is dark and full of writing. My book is gonna be published! What the fuck? Stephanie Meyer. I'm having an out of body experience. I'm completely crazy. <laughs> Season two, book two, two, book two. Woo! Guess where I just got back from? Yoga! It's just like old times, you guys. I've missed recording right after yoga. Yes, my hair is sweaty. And yes, my makeup is, you know. Mm. But I am excited and I'm feeling good. Before we get into the meat of discussion, I have to thank... Book of the Month YA for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard already, Book of the Month YA is a book subscription service. Every month they feature five new exciting titles. You take a look at those titles, you pick the one that sings to you, and they send it out in one of these beautiful boxes. They've given me a discount code, so if you sign up and use code PSL5, you'll get your first box for $9.99. It's a great way to keep on top of the most exciting new YA releases and remind yourself to read, to treat yourself to a fun read every month. The five titles they're featuring this month are The Beautiful by Renee Adie. I'm so excited for this one. I'm reading this this month. Wayward Son by Rainbow Rawl. I want to read this ASAP too. Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. The Fountains of Silence by Rudis of Petties. This is our October book explosion book of the month. And Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. The books are always hardcover. And should there come a month that maybe none of the featured titles are calling to you, you can always opt out for that month without any penalty. It's a fabulous time to sign up for book of the month YA. Link is at the top of the description below. Okay! Where do I even start? My book came out May 7th of 2019 of this year. I don't know if you've heard me talk about it in any videos. I don't. Thank you so much for all your support. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a review on Amazon. It's super, super helpful. If you feel up to it, no pressure. But thank you if you do. I know I've talked about on Instagram, if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at Xtime. I've talked about how I'm going to do a like tell-all again, but better Q&A, spoilery q and I'm still very excited to do that. Uh, and I already have all the questions on an Instagram post ready to go. If you haven't left one and you'd like to, you can find the Instagram post and you can leave it there. The reason it got postponed is because I realized it hasn't even been out for six months yet. And I was like, is it really time to do a spoilery Q&A? But now we're getting like, we're, we're at the six month mark practically that it's been out for six months. So I'll be doing that soon. Before the year's out, that video will come out. Anyway, I'm officially working on book two. I'm working on my first draft of my second book and it's so different than working on the first book. I mean we left off and I had been working on an outline. I have a 110 page outline and I've also written a synopsis, a 16 page synopsis where I kind of went into detail about each of the characters and their motivations and got to think about their backstories and why they are the way they are and their emotional arcs that will be happening throughout this new book. I have a working title. We're probably not going to go with that title. But the initials are BT. So we're going to call this BT. I'm working on BT. We'll see where the title goes from there. You know I have a long extensive title process and I can't really come to a solid conclusion until the book's written out. Book two has been a weird journey because since I've done <laughs> so much outlining, done so much outlining that I feel like I've finished it a couple times. It changes every time and it's gonna change so much when it's already written. But it's weird to like get to the end. Hey. Come back on. Okay. It's weird to like, get to the end of a character and feel like you were almost there with them, but you didn't. You were just like plotting it out. That feeling's usually reserved. <laughs> Usually. Just for me. It's usually been reserved for when I get the pleasure of getting to the end of the book. Like I've never gotten to the end of a second book before in full writing. And I have no idea what the word count for this book is gonna be. Like no idea. I have no idea. I'm hoping around 100k. Like around the same as I give it better. I'm thinking probably it will be around 100k. But now that I've like, I've plotted it. So it shouldn't go on forever. Like again, but better did in the first stages. But who knows? Who knows? And that, that mystery, I'm trying not to let it get to me. It does get to me, but I'm trying not to let it 
You can't control me. I control my own destiny. A good thing to have now are goals, right? I have a hard deadline for the first draft of book two. May 1st. But before that deadline, I need to at least do two drafts. At least. Like, if I can do more, I'm gonna do as many as I can. Right now, it's the end of September. It's the last day of September. And I have about 19,000 words. And all of these words were words that I had already written down. Like, I vomited these when I was trying to put together an outline because I couldn't put together an outline without vomiting some words and then I went back to the outline because I was like, okay, I have an idea how this looks. And I've been having trouble making these words better as I go through the first draft. Because you know why? I haven't written anything else. I've written the outline, but I haven't written anything else in terms of like this story and been with these characters. Can you stop? Oh, faulty lights. Because I haven't written anymore with these characters. I haven't been with them longer. I haven't gotten to know them better. Yeah, I've been out of the story. You know, I wrote the outline and finished it. Let it sit. And I switched to a different project. And that different project, while also important and exciting, wasn't this project. And I haven't grown with this one. So I, I have to just plow through these 20,000 words that I already have and just read them basically and stop going back because you know what I find myself doing? Going back and editing these 20,000 words that I wrote. It's like nothing matters with these 20,000 words so you get the rest of the story on it then you can start connecting and fixing things and making it better but there's nothing, you can't make something better if you don't know what it is yet. You know what I'm saying? Does this make sense? Or am I just crying out into the void? I think it makes sense. September has been a month of me harping on these 20k instead of just like accepting that I will come back to these and make them better. I've, I've gotten into editor head and I, because I've been an editor head for again but better. I've been an editor head with this other project that I was working on because it's a smaller project so I already had like a draft and I was just like going over and over and over and that's not what we're doing here. We need to word vomit up the first draft so I have as much time as possible to make it better. Another thing I've been working on is the skill of juggling two projects. And that's another reason why my writing schedule hasn't been as rigid on book two, BT. Oh my God, BT is book two. <gasps> I like to get very into the mindset of whatever project I'm working on. And if I'm working on two projects, it's like switching brains almost, kind of. You're jumping into two different worlds. Jumping from story to story is something that I have trouble doing. I know some people like to switch stories. I like to like stay until I finished it. My mindset thus far is very much pick up a project, I put my hundred and gajillion percent into it, and then when it's finished, I pick up a new project. But sometimes projects overlap, and that's just the way it is. I want to start honing that skill. If you have any tips for juggling different projects, like how you schedule your weeks or your months in terms of two different projects, please let me know. I'm doing October Rhymo-ish. This is my goal. 20k end of September. That's today and I'm at 19,000 words practically there. End of October we want to see 50k on the page. Hypothetically half the book but let's be honest I overwrite. Then we have November and December and January to get the rest of the book out and February 1st is my first draft deadline for myself. Because then I have at least a month, because you need to sit away from it after that. You have to sit away from it for a month. Just like letting it sink in and maybe send it to your critique partners to, for them to give you feedback before you go into it. Because if you just jump right back in, you're not going to be able to do it again but better because you're not going to have any distance. You need distance. I am going to be back doing writing videos. I'm so excited to get back to talking to you guys about writing on a regular basis. Because let's be honest, it didn't feel like I was writing when I wasn't talking to you guys. What did it? It didn't even feel like I was writing to me and I was writing. It was just like, am I writing? I'm putting words down on pages. But I haven't discussed it much with anyone. So is this even real? I'm kind of in limbo when I'm not making these videos. These ground me into the project that I'm working on. When I sat down finally to get back into this draft, it was when I was in Toronto for TIFF. I had six hours and I went to Starbucks and I put in my headphones and I opened up this 20,000 word document that I had from when I threw up words. I just had the best time. I just felt this joy that I haven't felt in so long as I haven't sat and written a book in so long. I haven't been there being like, <laughs> I finished again but better doing did it did it did it for again but better like last November earlier than 20 I don't even it's been a long time it's just it's really exciting to be jumping back into that world I was on my first panel as an author at Pasadena Loves YA last week it was so weird now, I've gotten really used to being the oldest person on the panel I think almost every panel I've been on has been with youtubers the majority of youtubers are youths and now that I'm nearing 30 and I've been there for 10 years and I feel really knowledgeable and confident in that knowledge because 
I've been doing it for so long. And I've been answering similar questions for so long. So I get on this author panel. It was just such a shift because suddenly I'm not the person who's been doing this for a hundred years. I'm the noob that's been doing this for like five seconds. And I am the baby. And I just forgot how nerve wracking that is. The intimidation of being the noob, the different style questions. Like I just haven't got, you know, authors get used to answering these author like questions over and over again. I've only gotten questions from you guys, not from other, like not on author panels where they have a person moderating it. So I don't have those answers down yet. So it was all like coming at me for the first time. And I was like, oh, I mean, I, I said words, but I feel like not many. I did feel like a baby. There are pros and cons to being a baby. And the con for me is always feeling like I know nothing. <laughs> and so anything I say is ridiculous. Like I don't have a right to speak. At the end of the panel, even just like we were asked who our favorite authors were as a teen. It's been almost 10 years since I was a teenager, but we're going down the line and the other authors are talking about their favorite authors as a teen. And I don't even know those authors or those books. Like I've, I hadn't heard of the books. And then it got to me and I was like, my favorite authors from J.K. Rowling and Dan Brown when I was a teenager. <laughs> are you guys didn't like J.K. Rowling? And they're like, that's because you were really young. And I was like, how? What do you mean? I'm really young. Yes, I'm young in terms of life, but really young. Just 29 just doesn't feel really young anymore. It just doesn't. Because I live in this world of social media where everyone is 20. It was just so different. I feel like I have my foot in two worlds now. One where I'm a youth and one where I'm an ancient. And it's so strange. I'm working on ab merch, you guys. Ab, again, but better. That's what ab is slang for. If you still haven't, if I've been saying ab and you don't know, it's again, but better, which is my... My book one. And I'm just so excited because I've been wanting to forever. I've been, I know what I wanted to do since I wrote the book. I was like, I want to do a t-shirt with this on it. But I'm going to try to do like some different styles of stuff. And a song I've been listening to to get into the zone every single time for the last couple weeks is Dancing With Myself by the Donnas. It just pumps me up. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. I'm really excited to start this new journey. I'm writing on a new computer. I think I wrote all of Again But Better on Phil. And now I have Dolores. New book, new laptop. Thank you so much for watching and being with me here. If you haven't followed me on Twitter or Instagram, please do. I'm at May there. And if you liked Ab and you have a second to review it on Amazon, highly appreciate it. Don't forget to check out Book of the Month YA. Links at the top of the description. Use code PSL5 to get your first facts for the discounted price of 99. I would love to hear how your projects are going. I hope they're going well. I'll see you next time.